Um, next, we're going to move into the uh, live TAVR case transmission. If I could invite Dr. Chung, Dr. Berkey, Dr. Jenneru, Dr. DeMeo to come up. Yeah, on the yeah top. we can do a Thor. Okay. And we'll cut over to the All operating right. room in St. Francis. Hey, guys. Can you hear us? Or... Hi. Hi. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you yeah. hear us? Can you yes, hear us? Yes, we can. Yes. All right. Well, no, thanks everybody for rejoining us. Uh, uh, Dr. Khan and Dr. Petrosian and myself enjoyed our Concord flight back to the USA, back to the hostile environment. So here we are back at Roslyn. Um, and we're doing a transfemoral aortic valve replacement. Do we have the slides for the uh, presentation? We can see them. Put the Iron Man down for you. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. So this is a 91-year-old male, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, his coronary artery disease, status post cabbage in 1992, and subsequent PCIs. Uh, uh, AVRNRT ablation in 2016, and um, of, of note, he is a very, very healthy 91-year-old, um, plays tennis every day, uh, does push-ups every day, but he noticed that his, uh, he's becoming increasingly shorter breath with exertion. Next slide. So he's had progressive shortness of breath, even at rest uh, for three days in your heart association class three or four. Next slide. On TEE, um, Lynn, can you, uh, if Lynn, well, Lynn's not, not with us. All right, so on TEE, with EF is 60, 65% aortic valve, there was severe aortic stenosis, peak velocity of, uh, of 403. Uh, the mean systolic gradient was 38. The valve area by velocity time integral method was 0.8. There is moderate to severe three plus mitral regurgitation directed eccentrically. Next slide. A cardiac cath, he had occlusion of native LAD with patent lima of the LAD and sapphire spray diagonal graft. Uh, the left main had patent stents. 50% mid circumflex lesion with occluded saphenous vein graft to the circumflex and the right coronary is normal. Next slide. Uh, CTA, uh, let's see the next slide. Uh, so Omar, you, you care to comment on yes, this? Yes, sure. So um, it looks like the annular area is 450 and the perimeter is 76. So uh, for for a sapien, I guess that falls into 26. And for a corval, probably 29 for the evolute. Um, sinuses are pretty large, above 30. And um, on, the, on the kind of 3 to 4 o'clock of the annulus, you see um, an area of calcification. Uh, and then up at the root, you see something. But it's possible that those are the stents that were described. Yeah, yeah, so, so I, I think, think the, the, it, one of the issues in this case is, the, is that eccentric calcification at 3 or 4 o'clock. Um, George, do you have any comments about that? Yeah, just, just that it's definitely, you know, a high-risk feature. Um, when you add that in along with his age, uh, you know, we're, we're going to err on the side of being conservative, I think, with any balloon dilatation. So that one of the advantages of the self-expanding valve is that we can deploy it and not have any real trauma to the annulus. If we have uh, aortic insufficiency, you know, we'll, we'll have to, uh, you know, pick pick a balloon on the conservative side. So the measurements that that are shown there are, are minimal diameter of about 21 and a, a maximal diameter of about 27. So I, I, I would err on the side if we have to post dilate with a 20 or 21 initially, just, just to play it safe. Okay, next slide. As opposed to what we typically would do would be go with the average size. So we typically would just balloon it with a 24. So I think you can see more of the same in this, in this, uh, in this view. Next slide. Uh, so the sinus heights are good. 
um, the carnary, the left main heavily calcified. Next slide. Um, it's a it's a uh, sort of an up and down aorta, so it's a, the approach is good. There are intact vein grafts that you can see in the ascending aorta. Next slide. Calcification is moderate, so that's in keeping with our plan not to predilate. Next slide. And the access is is good from the uh, what, what we're showing on this slide. The right side, however. Uh, at the table side ultrasound. I mean, uh, uh, Jeffrey, you want to comment on that? Just uh, felt a bit nodular and there was a small uh, hematoma uh, on the ultrasound. Also not appreciable on on the CT, but there was a bit of uh, anterior calcium uh, at that site. So we just used ultrasound to guide away from that calcium for the contralateral puncture. And... Uh, well, going with the big sheath on this yeah. side. Ultrasound away. All right, so you want to comment on the value of ultrasound and vascular access? Uh, yeah, wet one, please. Yeah, you know, it just, it gives you real-time uh, guidance. You, you can you can make a nice anterior puncture, you, you know, it's, it's quick, it's reliable, it's safe, mm -hmm. but I really like it. <laughs> Next slide. Next slide. Uh, so in summary, uh, uh, we're thinking transfemoral um, approach. Uh, the mean diameters are 6.8 on both sides. We have now decided to go on the left side. Um, and um, uh, that's it. So transfemoral aortic valve replacement. Next slide. Okay, let's... Um, Let's go to the full screen now, uh, images of what we're doing, because uh, as I've been speaking, um, a lot's have been accomplished. Oh, uh, the table is going George. on. George. No, I just, I leveled it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't leveled. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Can you give us the full split screen? So, uh, you know, see, obviously on this one, you cut the surgeon out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good day. <laughs> right. Second Can you bring this camera please. in. So oh, yeah. um, on the groin here, we have, uh, you know, do you want to show us, show everyone the access where we've got? All right, let's pan in on the access in the groin. You want to roll from forward? the wall, from the wall camera. Todd, do you want to roll forward? Come on in, come on in now. Pan over. So we're going up Good. on the left side. So what we we've also put a, a sheath in the right radial artery that we're going to put a sentinel device in. Uh, that sheath is in, and uh, we have sheaths in the right femoral artery and femoral vein. The femoral artery uh, sheath on the right we're using for a pigtail catheter that we'll use to inject during the procedure to show us the level of the valve implant. Um, we always um, used Roll to forward. put a temporary pacemaker in on the femoral vein and, and have it for two reasons. One, to rapid pace for balloon inflations uh, and also in case there's heart block. Um, lately, we on selected cases, we've been pacing off the wire that we have in the left ventricle uh, for the TAVR deployment. So we'll, we'll be doing that here. Do, do we have, you have the alligator? Okay. Yeah. Ready to inject for 10. Okay. okay, that looks good. So we're gonna give the heparin and then uh, Sentinel. Put a large sheath in now on the left uh, that, that we'll use to dilate the tract and and uh, then we'll put our Sentinel protection in and then go across the valve. 
So one thing I want to point out is that in real time, uh, we've actually been working about 15 minutes. Uh, when we first started doing Tavers, uh, so I want to point. I want to introduce as well uh, Chris Mullen and Dustin Garavelli. They are the uh, representatives for Medtronic in this case. So, so uh, Dustin, when we first started doing Tavern to get to this point, how long did it take? Let's put a JR on that. Sentinel. <laughs> <laughs> So he said three hours and a lot more people in the room. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the Sentinel. Yeah. Okay. So now we're placing this from the, the radial artery on the right. And I'm put, putting a um, catheter up on the left yeah, for exactly. crossing the valve. We have the straight wire. The nice thing about having a, a left-handed surgeon is you can work simultaneously. <laughs> He's talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> you have your own camera now. So now what we're doing is we're uh, flexing the sentinel device. You can see it up on and uh, near the arch. My job actually is just to stay out of the way. Pull, pull up a little. Yeah. Just see that. Yeah. That. I wonder if that's vertebral. You want to come back? The pig yeah. back? Yeah. I'm not convinced that's not vertebral. Yeah. How's that? So they're um, seeking uh, to find the carotid orifice. This case, a little bit of tortuosity. So there you go. That's better. Yep. Okay. All right. So More engaging the, car the carotid. Um, again, okay, so now this, this, this now part of the procedure in many, many cases can take much longer. I think that took what? Um, two couple minutes. minutes. So we have two filters now, one in the anominate, one in the, in the left common carotid. So now, now we're going to, uh, from the left femoral artery, we're going to cross the aortic valve. Uh, we use a, a straight wire to kind of find the, the orifice. It can take a minute or two. Uh, one of the things that, um, that helps reduce stroke is minimal um, um, manipulation in the, in the root. And what we found here is the jet, because um, you should see the wire flicking when you're in the jet, and then it's just a matter of timing. <clears throat> just get get it when the valve's open. Are you able to uh, switch to the okay. emergency screen? So There's our on the screen. You can see. Uh, actually, you don't see our screen. There's another screen. Can you show the other screen or not? With the human dynamics or not? There's a th roughly 30 millimeter gradient. Okay. That it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's left ventricular pressure and femoral artery pressure or aortic pressure, and roughly a 30 millimeter 30, gradient. 36 enrolled in the progress study. <laughs> uh, approved. Uh, it shows you how right. uh, imaging is better because we found four four meters per second. Those they're only seeing. Much yeah, less. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff is just being a comedian. Oh, our machine is better. <laughs> All right, go for it, George. 
Uh, so I want to po point out one very subtle thing from my perspective is that I somehow yeah. convinced Jaffer to uh, enjoin with me that we would switch from the right side to the left side access. And the whole point of that, besides having better access, was that I get to participate in the in the valve deployment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now this is uh, our the wire that it's a pre-shaped wire that we're using sits at the LV apex, and okay, it looks like a, you okay, using a confido wire, right? Confido wire, wire yeah, yeah, right. Confido, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you're gonna shave, you just... shave the back a little, uh, when you paste from the LV wire with the confido. You shave the back a little bit, remove the coating, or you don't do that anymore. Not really. This wire has a, uh, a denuded portion that is uh, specifically designed for that purpose. It improves thresholds a bit, but we just <clears throat> we just paste with max juice, mm -hmm. and uh, ready? for a short yeah. period, so it works all right. I got that. And how do you, um, you got wire? ground? Yep. How do you ground? No, no, I got wire. The, okay. The needle in the groin. We'll show you in a minute. Yeah, yeah. We'll just show you in a sec. I got wire. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. be patient. Okay. And can you, and can you tell us about the safety check you did on the valve? The, the, you want to do that? Looking at it under fluorescent. Yeah. Let's just show them that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do it again. I've got a wire in the um, needle. Yeah. I've got a. So so we. we can I have a short chair? You want to put it, where, where am I? Put it in the Venus? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So in answer to your question, there so while go. George is showing you the safety check. So, so what we're looking for here is we want to make sure that the valve is, is uh, smoothly uh, loaded and that there's no infolding of, of tissue. And if we see that, I'll send it this again. I mean, this looks great, so you don't see anything, but, but it, right, so you, you, you don't want it to go past the third node. Is that a fair fourth? Third or fourth, yep. If there, if there was a, a line uh, that was present. All right, watch out, you're bleeding a little bit. Yeah, I got it. So Philippe, in answer to your question, I think it was Philippe that asked, how do we ground? Um, we just put a, a wire right here um, through the venous sheath. We don't always get a venous sheath today. We just got one. Um, we kind of look at the length of the membranous septum. That's large. We sometimes don't bother with the venous nice. sheath. Um, but this is the best, gives you the lowest thresholds. Otherwise, just put a needle through the skin or the incision that we make for uh, for the TAVA sheath, you can just clip the alligator clips right on there. So three ways to ground. You can also just pin it to the sentinel wire. You, you could you could ground anyway, it, you know, doesn't make a big difference. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, do you wanna go uh, LAO? You wanna test pacing? Sure. One of the things with uh, Evolute valve implantation is, um, so to test that we need the wire fully uh, sheath to test pacing. Um, but one of the things with Evolute valve implantation is, uh, you know, two, two advances. One, we try and aim for commercial alignment. So in LAO, I want the hat marker to the outer side and that corresponds with a three o'clock, three o'clock, uh, position of this hub right so here yeah. at the back. So we can go up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Hang on one second. And then we uh, isolate the non-cusp for deployment called a cusp overlap view. Um, and it works well for Evolute deployment <clears throat> is, uh, okay. uh, and it uh, probably reduces, uh, it has been, uh, Instrumental in trying to reduce the pacemaker rate. All right, so George. you can uh, go you, ahead and test George. the pacer now. The, the uh... you can stay at one twenty after you test it. Okay. So the pacer is capturing. Yeah. Can we see the screen with the hemodynamic and the pacing? It would be great. 
Oh yeah, could we put hemos and uh, pacing up on screen? There That'd it is. Great. Okay. Do you want to point out where the the hat is at the? You know, um, I don't think that the audience. Not. Sure which, Can you mag up, George? Mean. Yeah. So the nice thing about the uh, FX is um, you've got these three dot markers on the valve. As so, as George and Newell unsheath, you want to keep those dot markers at the annulus. Um, yeah. And in uh, yeah. looks good right now. It looks very good. So we're going to do a quick shot here. That's great. Yeah, maybe you'll come back a little bit. It's like, oh, really? Well, I think so. Okay. So sheath is being pulled back, and you can see the um, the evolute valve, which is um, self expanding, beginning to expand. Okay, you can you can uh, you can stop pacing. We'll do another shot. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, in this view, the other thing. Uh, about commercial alignment, two of the dots are on the left-hand side, one on the right, um, and that sh that proves we've achieved perfect commercial alignment, which is really important for re-engaging the coronaries in in Evolut. Probably good for flow dynamics and the sinus and reducing uh, leaflet thrombosis as well. So that shot proves that the the valve is is in a good position on the right-hand side of the screen at the left coronary. Uh, sinus and, and the valve is below the annulus. So I think we're ready to let it go. All right, right. let's fluoro now just to see where we are. Okay. Does everybody agree? So George just pulled the wire do, back um, wanna, to prevent go that LA. backward pressure on the valve. Do you want to go? And we're LA. in LAO. We're in LAO already. And the second shot was in LAO to look at the uh, position on the left. I think we're okay. Newell is keeping forward okay. pressure. George has pulled the wire back okay. and. Uh, Deployment. We're pulling the sheath back, and you'll see it spring open in a second. No, it's off. I think it's off both. I'm not sure. Now it is. Straighten the wire. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So now. We're going to take a uh, valves deployed. Go now going back. back. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Want it this one? Oh, we can do both. Ten, shot with ten. So the, there's uh, probably two plus aortic insufficiencies. So the Ventricles filling. I, I, my vote would be just take a twenty balloon and just make it a little better and call it a day. That okay? And you can see actually. So on the left hand side, we're we're still in LAO, so the left cusp is isolated on the left. You see that big chunk of calcium that you saw on CT. That's where the PVL is as well. Um, and so, uh, Look, so that's what we're trying to looks address. Looks nastier here than it did even on CT. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So we okay. may not be able to beat that, but let, we'll bump it out a little bit. A little bit, All right? Also, the skirt of this valve um, expands with time, so uh, you know this will this will just get better. I think at ninety-one years old, um, the wire in, in in northern New exactly. Jersey, we'll leave it alone like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's Thirty days, you can, you can always come back. Yeah. Can play double tennis now. <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking for perfection. No, not perfection. <laughs> Good. So what we just did there was we took the valve out, we put a sheath in because the Evolute has an inline sheath. It doesn't go through its own sheath. It goes in on its own. So we put, a, put our 14 French sheath back, going up with the balloon. Oh. 
Okay. okay. You want to pace at 180? One second. I'll clip this back on here. or inflating a bl I did a little bit. Okay, um, you can uh, stop. Just to your point, Philippe, this is this is pretty gentle. You know, the um, the diameter from the edge of the calcium to the to the opposite end of the annulus was twenty three. So uh, so twenty is is pretty gentle in this in this ninety year old. Okay, so we'll do another shot. <laughs> we're, we're very gentle yeah. in proximal Long Island. <laughs> Better. Wah wah wee wah. Better. That's a win. Okay, so there's just a trace AI. Perfect. So, uh, so first thing we're going to take the sentinel out. Well, I want to just comment on the pacing technique. The thing that makes me nervous about putting that wire in the venous sheath is we lose track of it. I've already taken it out so we don't lose it upstream. Back, you know, trips. Well, the sentinel is out. You'll tell Judy. You tell us if there's anything in there. All right. Just uh, cat the the what? Just flooring. Sorry. Any yeah, other fine. any questions from the audience? Can you hear us? We can. Everybody's so impressed. There's no questions. We're just we're just. We're speechless. <laughs> oh, me have it. Oh, stop. <laughs> um, you know, one of the one of the reasons to show this case, you know, we were discussing what to show. We showed you an incredibly complex case this morning, but one of the reasons to show this is how far aortic valve replacement has come and how easy and quickly you can replace an aortic valve in 2023. Um, so, so I think. Uh, you want to get protamine? I think we 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 achieved that. Yeah, we we're wondering what you're going to do for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> you guys get to go have coffee. <laughs> we're going to drink heavily. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go visit our first patient. Make sure she's okay. Tell her we all said hello. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I will say maybe one thing. I think um, for this patient above 90 years old, a lot of time we, we use a dry seal. It was proposed on the initial slide, torturous vessel. We like to put a, a 18 French or a 22 for the 34 um, with Evolute because it's made everything easier, neater, and just if you have to be, do a BAV like that. But um, yeah. We do that sometimes too. Um, depending on the situation, the tortuosity, and if we expect there's going to be changes or, or sheath changes. But I think a, there, Dr. Khan's example was good that this is kind of like the bread and butter stuff. So we wanted everybody to see a case that wasn't a super complex one, but more like if you have a 91 year old you're taking care of who plays tennis and doesn't want to have their chest opened, they can come in and it took, they prepared for 10 minutes maybe before we went on. And then we were just with them for less than 20 minutes or so. So, and that was slow because they were talking about it. So it shows how well we can take care of people quickly in proximal Long Island or Northern New Jersey and get them <laughs> some back outside. I actually have a question. Yeah. You were probably involved in the planning for this, uh, this case. Tell me about um, valve selection, Evolute yeah. versus a Sapien valve. So when we see something like this, where this patient had a very large amount of annular calcium, the one thing we don't want to do is balloon the valve initially. Um, we really don't want to balloon the valve at all, which is why they chose a 20, which kind of just like kissed the edges of the mm -hmm. valve and didn't do much. But going with the balloon expandable valve and somebody like this who is at 91, if he does suffer a complication like a root rupture or something like that, his chance of having that repaired successfully and doing well is not great. Um, but a self-expanding valve here fits his size. 
Um, we looked at his coronaries. We know what his, his, his coronary anatomy looks like and his need for intervention, if anything, in the future, which is very low. Hmm. And so a self-expanding valve is kind of perfect for him. And be, before we go to David, but uh, I think here is important, 91 bypass protected mm -hmm. corner is super high so that the ch I mean I think this is, there's one place to use a self-expendable valve is in this guy uh, calcium old uh, patient and protected okay. so my question has to do with the MR it went by fast but he had three plus MR um, you know again he's 91 but I'd like to hear from the surgeons and from Omar what do you think is going to happen to that MR do you think we're going to need to come back and do something about that what would you have done if he was you know, instead yeah, of 91, been 71. Well, uh, I mean, a 91-year-old with, um, with truly severe AS, with a very high gradient, um, who's going for an open operation, uh, most likely he would just get an aortic valve replacement, and then we would presume that there'd be a significant downgrade of his MR uh, after, you know, relieving the LVOT obstruction. Um, obviously, if he has structural valve deterioration, primary MR, that's a different story, but presumably this was all functional, secondary to the high transvalvular gradient. So even in the OR, uh, my bias would be not to touch the mitral valve in this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 would you have done it any with 71? And, you know, again, I mean, or just functional, you leave it alone, is uh, the, the, the mantra. Uh, no, well. I'm, I'm making it tough on purpose. I think it, I think it depends on what the valve looks like and yeah. what, what's yeah. going on. We see plenty of people that have some degree of MR but very severe AS. And when you relieve that pressure, the pressure in the LV goes down. So if their LV pressure is 180 um, but their systemic pressure is 120, there's 60 extra millimeters in there that are pushing against the mitral valve every time the heart contracts. So we often see the MR go down anyway. In a 91-year-old, the, the STS calculator doesn't allow yeah. us to put it multiple breaks. procedures other than an AVR cabbage, cabbage or a mitral, yeah. cab, mitral cab. It doesn't allow for double valve. So we can only infer what would happen or extrapolate what would happen, I guess, based on, you know, a 91-year-old going in for a double valve operation would make them a lot higher risk. You ever do an Alfieri in these cases? I mean, Alfieri is pretty much in the preserve of Dr. Chung and Dr. Berkey yeah. these days. <laughs> uh, but you're, if you're lot, there, I mean, if you're like literally well, I mean, in I, there. You know, for me, I think, I think a quick mitral ring in a younger, low-risk patient would be an easy thing to do with, with, with not much downside. And um, uh, that, would, that would probably be my bias if I felt that they had enough MR to justify doing a double valve procedure. Yeah. Plus, you know, after the aortic valve is um, treated, either way, the patient's going to likely be on more medication. Um, so that, that may, you know, may help, help with some well. of the Omar, do you have any thoughts about the MR improvement? Yes, yeah, so I think, I mean, we didn't see the echo images, but um, it said eccentric jet, which could mean functional or degenerative. And similarly to, to in surgery, we have TAVR data saying that functional MR likely gets better, but degenerative doesn't. Um, so I think that's something you could uh, assess later. And Al and I have had discussions in the OR when he's doing an AVR of a combined strategy. So for example, if he thinks the risk of an additional mitral surgery is high, even in, in a youngish patient, we're calling 70 young, that that patient could be, then be reevaluated later for a, a clip, potential yeah. mitral clip. Great. Yeah, I think it's an important point. I mean, uh, it's good to have a plan of you know what to do with the mitral um, even after you treat the aortic. Um, you know, the patient had a TEE, a CTA, so you probably could get a good sense if, uh, you know, you could treat it with a tier mitral clip or TMVR. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A lot of patients do really well afterwards, and they don't need the mitral treated, so we would watch. Yeah, I would guess, too, the description of this guy's symptoms were dyspnea on exertion. He wasn't having ankle edema. He wasn't having orthopnea. My guess is that it's AS is his primary problem. Always, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.